Hey guys, Luke here, and welcome back to Season 2, Episode 10 of my West Eyes Crew Mode. Now, in this episode, this is going to be, you know, a bit of a different episode in terms of there's a buy, but uh, you'll notice lengthwise, it's pretty normal to, um, to what a normal episode would be. Uh, and the reason being is that the game, first off, is at Epic, and second off, I'm going to go over some transfers, because the transfer market uh, is open, the signing, you know, recruitment window, whatever, is open. But before we do that, I'm going to take on the men who are Seagulls, who have defeated us in the past, and... You know, they've got a really, really strong side in this game. So, uh, yeah, Paddy Richards, he's playing for them. Obviously, he was at our club um, last season. And we know he's a really, really good player. It's just a matter of he wanted a bit too much money. Uh, but, obviously, Manly have a lot of money somehow. Uh, it looks like they've, um, you know, they've got Jacob Loco on the bench. But Chase Blair seems to be a good center on this game. Uh, seen some people suggest him for a wing at one point. Um, I think you know who you are. I can't really remember exactly who it was, but... You know, it looks to be a good choice because in this game, you know, I've got to say we had a lot of trouble with a lot of the Manly players. And you'll see as the video eventuates, but, um, you know, there was a certain few people uh, from the Manly side who had incredible games in this one. Same goes for, you know, our, our team. But you see Cherry Evans here, 11 minutes into the game. What a kick that was, 40-20. Now, you know, just if the Titans had a player like Cherry Evans, yeah, that's, a, that's a little bit of an insult to uh, some of those Titans fans. You know who you are, but... Uh, just, I couldn't help myself. Had to go for it. Anyways, uh, we're down. Well, not down, but it's nil all. Uh, and they couldn't capitalize on it. They put up a left-footed kick for some reason instead of just the right-footed um, kick. But it was ba uh, batted back down. Kevin Aguama came up with a big play, made the tackle, and, uh, you know, saved a try from being scored. And uh, off that, we're going to go up to the other end, and we're going to score pretty much our first chance of the game. We haven't really had too much field position or too much ball. So, um, scoring points... Not something that I thought would happen as easy as that. Uh, all it took was, you know, a bit of drawing passing and a few penalties and you know, a dummy and more through there with Chris Lawrence. But we scored a fair few similar sort of tries like that. So, um, I don't think it's a shock that he, Chris Lawrence scored. It just, I don't know, it was just pretty easy, which was a little bit weird. Now, right here, Tedesco ends up dropping the ball. Now, what happened there, I was trying to leave the ball so it would go out, um, you know, go over the dead ball line and we get um, seven tackles set. And I was like, what the hell? Like, why did... Why did he even touch it? It's happened a few times. And off the back of that, Daly Cherry Evans has had a fantastic game. Uh, he's been ripping us to shreds so far. Been line breaks left, right, and center with him involved. And uh, unfortunately for Manly, they can't kick a goal. Or he can't kick the goal, I should say. But uh, pretty happy, um, you know, being a Tigers coach. You know, I'm pretty happy with that. But I'm not happy with this defense. This is absolutely woeful. I think it's George Defua. Or it might be Peter Hiku. I don't, I don't really care who it is. It was so annoying, and George, yeah, it was George Tafua celebrating there with Steve Maddai, and oh my god, that was frustrating. But yeah, Cherry Evans has been ripping us apart. We've got the 40 20. Um, he's scored a try, he's kicked, kicked one of the two goals. So uh, I don't know, there's not much we've been able to do to um, combat Cherry Evans from, you know, from just ripping us apart. I think Foran's still his house partner as well, so it's danger on both sides. And Sesco here, he sort of stops Cherry Evans for a little bit, but then ends up just. The broken tackle and Cherry Evans rests away and scores his second try of the game. And this time, I was thinking, oh my god, F you, Cherry Evans. Like, get out. Why couldn't you go play for Titans? Like, seriously, this was like the most frustrating game ever. You saw there, we, I think we, he broke his first tackle. Then we sort of wrapped him up a little bit with Tedesco and then he just breaks away from that one. So I was thinking, what the hell can we do? I don't know how you're supposed to combat those break tackles. Is there something that you're supposed to do that will stop it from happening? I don't know, but see here, a second time, it's George Hill again, I believe, and just breaks through that tackle really, really easily. This time, Chris Lawrence, a bit more speedier player, um, was, you know, was there and was able to um, wrap him up. But you see here, the ball, come on, go over the sideline. Uh, sorry, go over the dead ball line. Just, what is happening? This game, it was so annoying. Like, it felt like everything I was doing, just n nothing was going right. But uh, is this a sign? This is something that's going to change here. Uh, they do get a player, Simbin, and is Liji Sao. Sao? I don't really know exactly how to pronounce his name, but he's signing. He signed with um, the Warriors in real life for um, 2016. Yeah, but he seems to be a decent player in real life. But uh, yeah, he got Simbin, and we took full advantage of that. And uh, like I said before, is that you know, is that the change that we needed? Is that the momentum killer for um, Sea Eagles? They were just dominating us. And uh, right here, you know, that might have been something we needed just before half time. Get that try, and we're not completely out of the game. Is there another comeback? We've been making a lot of comebacks this season, uh, which is, isn't exactly what I like to do. I like to grind out a victory, but I mean, when you just get blown off the park like we have by Cherry Evans and uh, the Manly side to fool and a few of those guys, you have to do what you have to do. And, uh, you know, we've been playing pretty well uh, to get back into this game, and we got pretty lucky to start off this, um, the first half. They ended up 
you know, a costly turnover, or well, wasn't a costly turnover because we didn't end up scoring, but um, just really rookie sort of shit where they'll throw on the pass to nobody. We jumped on the ball. Cameron King, I thought, wasn't too bad of a grubber, but obviously went over the dead ball line. And Sam Holiday, just then, I thought he was going to go over, but that's not where the play is going to stop. Fourth tackle, Cameron King gets it to Luke Brooks, just uh, double pumps, and then gets it to Tim Simona. And Tim Simona, he's over. That was a really, really easy try um, to the left center. And we'll have a kick at goal to even it up. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Starts out to the right, comes back in, and, you know, straight over. So two from three, both sides have missed the goal. But I've got to say, we're sort of in the pole position, I would have to think. Uh, we've got the momentum with us, so we're really disappointed to end up losing this game. Although Manly a great side, and you can never rule them out. But Jamie Brewer, I think it was, ends up with the ball there. Maybe it was Matt Ballon, I don't know. But Cherry Evans jumps in, dummy half, they put in a grubber. And it is touched by Alex Glenn, but he picks up the ball. Man, they match from last episode's last game. So uh, Alex Glenn, someone who doesn't get enough wraps for me probably, but he does a great job for us. And uh, they've taken um, a kick return back here. They pass the ball, and every pass, apart from these last few ones, once it got to the guy, the headgear, Ballon, or I don't know who it was exactly. Um, probably Bura, but they're passing it back, and then their player was getting thrown backwards as well. So uh, it made no sense that they were able to end up making huge amounts of ground in, uh, in that set, but they did, and it was so annoying. And just, you know, the momentum was gone again from us. They're just making so many line breaks, and we're coming up with last year's attempts at tackles, and Tim Simone with another one just there. And there we have it. We win the ball back. You would think that's where the pressure's over, but Luke Brooks jumps in a dummy half, and game glitch. Uh, you pass right, well, you think you're passing right, you press right, and they decide to throw it over the sideline for whatever reason. Nine times out of ten in that position. I don't think there's ever been a black position when I'm in that spot and to actually throw it in the right direction so I don't know what the alternative is you just run with the ball or you, you press the opposite button I don't really want to try the opposite button I think in the future you just have to run it yourself but uh they end up scoring Brett Stewart was and he's a really really good player in this game and that's why I continually pick him in all these uh insane videos uh pick Brett Stewart because he's just incredible you see there just step straight around Tedesco I can't I can't even blame Tedesco at this point our team is just buggered we just defended so much and you know something had to give and you know, 28-16 down, uh, you know, it's not, it's not unachievable to come back from this, but it's going to be, it's going to be a tough one, but 28-16, we are going to uh, pull back one try, so it should be a six-point ball game with, you know, maybe just a bit over five minutes to go, got to kick the goal, obviously, so that'll take up a little bit of time, but Kevin Aguama doing what he does best, um, uses his pace, takes it around the fullback, and Brush Stewart had no chance at that point, and uh, Curtis Sheeran kicks the goal, obviously, from right in front, and, uh, you know, it's game on, but at the same time, we haven't got much time to work with, so interesting to see what exactly uh, happens here. But Aaron Woods takes it back from um, the kickoff, and he's going to win a penalty for us, so that's really, really good for us. And that gives us great field position. Can we do something with it? Hopefully. And it's just a matter of drawing past Aaron Woods getting involved, and we've got a try here, and we've blown a try there. Oh, my God, the frustration going through, you know... My blood was boiling just then, uh, even just watching it back. I know at the time it was, like, really frustrating, but, you know... Don't have that many opportunities. Don't know how many opportunities you're going to get. And, you know, we blew it completely. But uh, we have one more chance just before full time. And we're just drawing a passing. Here we have Sam Thider. Can he make up for it? The pass looked a mile forward. But it's going to stand. And there we have it. Kevin Naguama. He scores another try. That's his second try in the space of a few minutes. And what a time to score. I can't believe that pass from Thider was allowed to, um, you know, be let go. But... I'm glad they did because uh, it's just saved us the game and it's going to go to Golden Point. We're scoring right on the buzzer to level it up. Very similar to um, the game against the Dragons. Another comeback and uh, hopefully this time we can actually go ahead and win the game. Against the Dragons we missed the goal and um, obviously lost the game. We lost the, the leveler. But 28-28, uh, you can see lots of tries being scored. A lot of people scoring the same tries. And oh my god, perfect start. Uh, we did this in, um, earlier in the game. And, you know, we were made to pay. And then right here, Manly were made to pay. They lose the game. Luke Brooks, first chance, first time. Um, you know, first time we had the opportunity, we took that field goal. And I was super happy to win that game. It was, it was great relief, to be honest with you. Manly, I don't know, for some reason, every time we come up against them, there's a super side in this game. And... I find it really tough. They've got a lot of players who break a lot of tackles. And, I mean, Jamie Lyon was a huge culprit last season, I think it was. And he wasn't even playing this game. And we're still having just as much trouble with, you know, Chase Blair and players like that. So, very, very strange. And you saw uh, there were the, the games from the last round. And at the start of the uh, start of this episode, you took a look at um, the round 11 
things as well, seeing we had the buyer. But uh, like I said earlier in the video, transfers and you know recruitment, that sort of stuff, it's open. So we can take a look at that. And first off, we're just going to have a look at the players who are off contract. So we're not going to be resigning all of them, but Martin Spout is someone we're looking to resign. He's had a great season for us, and I don't really feel like um, he should be leaving our club. He's a great player who can come off the bench. He can play lock, he can play a few different positions. So definitely worth having him. Uh, Chris Lawrence, not someone who I would assume people are a huge fan of probably, you know, in the comment section below, but for his, you know, for what he was asking and, you know, the, all the other players who had similar ability, he, there's just no way we could go and uh, let Chris Lawrence leave, plus he's like our captain. Uh, Keith Galloway, another one who I wasn't planning on re-signing, but decided last minute to uh, throw him a contract there and, um, you know, he'd probably come off the bench or something because we've got a few signings later on in the episode you'll be able to see and might be a little bit of a spoil on screen right now if you didn't catch it but you'll see it later. Uh, Charrington, we were signed him for a pretty uh, smallish contract. He wanted a lot more but we got him for less and uh, both these last two players, not really that important but we did um, sign them for a lot less than what they wanted. Then Jake Granville, I'm very, very happy to make this signing. Um, I love him in real life. On the game, he can't play the full 80, so Cameron King will have a spot in the side, and, you know, Charrington, we can let him grow a little bit, but Charrington's been really good. Cameron King, just not quite up to scratch to uh, for me, but, I mean, he's not a bad player, obviously, but, you know, I feel he's got a spot in the side, just Jake Granville, too hard to pass up. David Clemmer, another one. Being rumored to actually go to the Titans, it's never going to happen, in my opinion, but, um, you know, he was there, and then I think it was Elijah Taylor was also available. So we got him to uh, come in in the lock position. So we got a really, really nice looking side for n next season. Then there was a few little additions just to play backups and that sort of stuff. And, um, you know, I'm not going to say that's all the signings for the season, but that's probably a large majority of them. There won't be too many after that. I'm not really sure what our salary cap is like at the moment, but um, I'd say it'd be pretty close to being full. Anyways, that's where the video is going to end. Hope you did enjoy it. Please leave a like if you did. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter at MrLukeNYT. Facebook page and description below and I'll see you for the next video. Bye guys.